Hi. Um, so my name is Ifat Afek. I'm a system architect in Nokia and the PTL of the OpenStack Vitrage project. And I'm going to uh, tell you today about the journey that we've made in this uh, project in the last year, year and a half. So just a short introduction about Vitrage. Vitrage is an official uh, service for uh, root cause analysis. Uh, it helps the cloud administrator understand and organize and manage the faults of the cloud. A cloud administrator that has a fault in the cloud might see a very long list of alarms and it may be hard for him to understand uh, what is the root cause for all these alarms and this is where Vitrage can help. Another role of Vitrage is to, um, to report alarms about problems that are not directly monitored. For example, in case of a physical NIC failure, uh, Vitrage can uh, deduce that there is a problem with the instances that are not, uh, not reachable and raise alarms on the instances. And if the instances are uh, used by uh, applications, then also raise alarms on the applications. Vitrage provides an holistic and complete view of the system where you can see the physical layer, the uh, virtual layer, and the application layer, the relationships between these layers, and the effect they had on one another. Um, a bit about Vitrage history. Um, it was initiated in uh, November uh, 2015, uh, just after the Mitaka Summit in Tokyo. Um, it was accepted to the Big Tent uh, six and a half months later, in the 1st of June uh, 2016. Uh, the first official version was uh, Newton, OpenStack Newton. And uh, since the beginning of this year, it is uh, used as part of uh, Nokia project, products, uh, commercial products, and it's running in production. And now I'll start telling about our journey. So uh, Vitrage started with a Nokia CloudBand product. Uh, as, part, as part of this product, we had a root cause analysis uh, uh, project. I was part of the Insight team, and we wrote a uh, Java code for uh, managing root cause analysis. Everything was, uh, worked well, um, the project was uh, successful, um, but since uh, CloudBand worked uh, tightly with OpenStack, we started thinking that maybe the root cause analysis belongs in OpenStack and not as a proprietary uh, Nokia code. So this was how Vitrage was born. Um, we decided to create a new project in OpenStack for root cause analysis, and we started checking whether it was feasible. Um, the, the first thing, the first step before even checking the feasibility was to find a name for the new project because we needed to, to call it somehow. And uh, we actually made a, a poll. Everybody suggested names and the, we had a poll and the winner was uh, Vitrage. And only much later we realized that a lot of people don't know what Vitrage means. Vitrage is a French word for stained glass window it's a window made of small pieces of glass with different colors. And when you look at each piece, you, you see just a, a colorful piece of glass. But only if you stand back and look at the entire window, you can see the whole picture. And this is something uh, that, like Vitrage is doing. Vitrage tries to see the entire cloud environment, the, all of the alarms, and make reason out of it. And Vitrage is a French word, but uh, uh, we thought it was an international word, but apparently we, we need to explain people again and again what it means. And um, <clears throat> about a few months ago, we had to choose a mascot for the project as part of OpenStack uh, mascot uh, selection, and we selected a giraffe. So the giraffe, um, its skin is a bit like a vitrage. It's made of different pieces, and we asked to get a colorful giraffe. And the giraffe is also very tall, so it sees everything from above. Uh, again, this is something that resembles the work that Vitrage is doing. And actually, we, we had other ideas for mascots. We wanted a tree like with a root cause, uh, very big roots for the root cause and fruit for the deduced alarms. Um, but Sandlin got a forest. We said that they told us we can't get a tree. And we wanted a suricata, which is always on alert. But telemetry product always, also wanted a suricata. So uh, I think that our giraffe is best. And actually, um, this picture was taken yesterday in Boston. So it's a seven meter uh, tall giraffe out of Lego. Um, so now we know that Boston uh, welcomes uh, our project. <clears throat> so uh, we went to the Tokyo Summit, a very big group of people from CloudBand. And our goal was to check whether uh, 
we should really get going with this project. Um, so we met uh, key people in OpenStack, and we, we tried to first understand if there is something similar in OpenStack, because we didn't want to start doing something that another project was already doing. And we actually got the blessing to, of the community to start going. We understood that, indeed, this functionality is lacking in OpenStack. There is no root cause analysis in OpenStack, and there was a real need uh, for our project. <clears throat> so we hit the road. We started, um, started work working, and we were not experienced with OpenStack, and it wasn't so easy to get started. Um, we started with a very big, uh, big um, uh, force, and we had more than 10 developers uh, working on Vitrage, some of them on the Vitrage core, some on the Vitrage dashboard. We wrote plugins for Horizon, and, um, and we knew mostly Java, so we had to learn Python. And we had a lot of experience with, um, with root cause analysis, so we knew what we wanted to do. But when we started doing the designs, uh, it wasn't so easy as we expected because Python has its own limitations and uh, different kind of designs. And in the beginning, we wrote a lot of blueprints. Um, that's the OpenStack way for doing design documents. And I mean, one, uh, we wanted to write the blueprints for the design, but also we hoped that other people may review our blueprints and comment and improve them. Um, uh, so after finishing the blueprints, uh, and we, as part of writing the blueprints, we had to get used to all the OpenStack way of working, the GitHub and the GoIt and, the, and Launchpad, and um, it, it wasn't really easy to, in the beginning. Um, but uh, as a new project, um, it was important for us to follow the OpenStack guidelines from the first day. And later on, when we were accepted to the big tent, we understood that it really, we did it the right way. Because uh, if you start working the, not by the guidelines, changing it later, it will be much harder. <clears throat> OK, this is a picture from uh, the Vitrage first IRC meeting. An IRC meeting is a, a chat meeting that uh, every project is supposed to do a team meeting on chat once a week. And we did it just uh, before we even had one line of code. We had the RFC meeting. And we were sitting like almost 20 people in a, very, in a big waiting room. Each one brought his own laptop, and we were chatting with each other instead of just talking. And it felt like a complete fake. Um, it felt ridiculous. But on the second meeting, we had a guest that actually interfered with our conversation and started uh, asking questions. So, um, what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't feel um, right to sit with your colleagues and chat. It feels uh, very strange. Um, but it gives other people in OpenStack the opportunity to, to listen and to participate in the conversation. Um, and for months, we were actually talking to ourselves this way. And I was a moderator. like I was saying, hey, uh, did you see what the other guy wrote? And maybe you should respond to him. Um, and now, I mean, it was changed, uh, and now we have uh, other contributors, and uh, the meetings are, are interesting, and we have real IRC meetings today. But this was the beginning. Um, so I talked about the IRC meeting. Uh, in addition, we have an IRC meeting uh, channel, openstack vitrage which is an open place where everybody can come in and ask questions about the channel. And similar to the IRC meeting, I was alone on the channel with some OpenStack bots for months. Uh, nobody entered the channel. I tried talking to my uh, team members, say, maybe you should enter the channel, but they tried to enter, so nothing was happening and didn't enter again. Until the first, pe first person came and asked a question, and we were so excited. Somebody is talking to us on our IRC channel. And today, we have like 15 people on the channel. And if you come and ask questions, you will get a fast response. Another issue uh, regarding the community handling is the uh, mailing list. And this is similar. If you want to, uh, we wanted to talk to each other um, and discuss design issues or problems or compilation problems or whatever. And um, we try to do it in OpenStack mailing list. And it, it, it was strange, because we could just talk to the person sitting next to us. But um, in many cases, we did send an email. And then when we were in Barcelona Summit uh, six months ago, 
we actually, people came to us and said, yeah, we know about Vitouage. We were uh, reading your emails on the mailing list. And we didn't know that these people were reading our emails. They never replied to the emails. But uh, I mean, it was worthwhile to send these emails and publish Vitouage and get others the chance to, to understand what we were doing and to get involved. Um, and the first real contribution was in uh, August 2016. We currently have a contribution from ZTE as part of the Vitouage project. I mean, uh, as you may know, we, we have occasional contributors, people that come and fix typos, but real contributors were uh, ZTE. Um, Vitouage, uh, as part of what it's doing, it depends on many data sources. So the, um, uh, the Vitouage gets information from OpenStack projects and from external monitors, combine it in a topology graph, and this is the baseline for understanding the cloud and getting insights about it. So uh, from the beginning, we had integrations with many OpenStack projects, and we used this information to, to have root cause analysis about, uh, about the cloud. And other than the OpenStack projects and the external monitors, we had a very important collaboration with OPNFV. So um, OPNFV has a, a main project which is called the Doctor Project. It's defined specification for fault management in the world of NFV. And, and um, we, we realized that the Doctor Project and Vitual have a lot in common. We read the specification of the doctor project and it has a component named the inspector and the role of the inspector is exactly what we were doing in Vitouage. So we communicated with the doctor team and <clears throat> we collaborated with them from the beginning and I think both sides benefited from this collaboration. Uh, back in the Tokyo summit first place where we initiated Vitouage, we had a meeting with doctor team we got very positive feedback that what we were going to do was really needed. And we presented Vitouage to Doctor in uh, OPNFV Hackfest in Santa Clara. And then we had uh, in two OpenStack Summit, we had common um, presentations with Vitouage and Doctor. And uh, in addition to Doctor, uh, we, we now have collaboration with OPNFV Barometer uh, project. And yesterday we had um, a session with them about the collect the integration with uh, Vitouage. And the highlight for the uh, OPNV and Vitouage collaboration was in Barcelona Summit, the keynote demo, uh, where uh, uh, Heto and Ilico were talking on the phone and Mark was cutting the cable with giant scissors and the phone call was not disconnected thanks to the doctor and Vitouage um, handling of fault management. Um, okay, and then um, uh, just six and a half months after it was started, it was accepted to the Big Tent. It was a major achievement um, because it happened very quickly and it happened overnight. I submitted a request um, and for about a week or two, I got no response, but then there was a technical committee meeting and on the very first meeting uh, with no arguments, uh, they just accepted us. And when I wrote the, the request, I, um, I looked at other project requests. I looked at projects that got into the big tent and also on projects that did not get into the big tent. So when I wrote down the request, I had a um, few points that were important. I described the project. I had uh, like a checklist of all the things that we are doing by the book, that we are doing uh, uh, the OpenStack way. I listed them all. And uh, one uh, major thing was that I described the community interest in Vitouage because writing a project is not enough. You need to show that it belongs to OpenStack. And if it interests the community, then it should be an open source. Um, and then after it was accepted to the big tent, uh, the, the next release about two months later was a Newton release. Uh, I mean, Vitouage, uh, Really was released in Mitaka and it was a stable release with a working functionality, but it was not official. And in Newton, I, we had uh, to make an official release. And as a new PTL, I didn't know how to do it. So I tried to release it and it, I, I was rejected. I didn't do it right. And I tried again and again, it wasn't right, but uh, eventually we have 
a release for Newton, um, which is good. And for, I mean, by now we already have Okata and we are working of, on Pike, of course. <clears throat> and from the beginning of this year, uh, Vitouage is already used by Nokia product uh, running in production. Um, so it is a, a stable product that uh, can be used both open source or um, used by other uh, companies. And we have, uh, of course, many future plans. We have uh, all the basic uh, functionality in place. Uh, the engine is working, but we have a lot more to add. A very interesting uh, roadmap. Um, we would like to add uh, root cause analysis history, meaning if I see an application uh, failure, um, and this failure is a result of a problem on the host that was yesterday, and the problem on the host uh, uh, affected the instance that is used by the application, and the problem on the host is already solved, but the application did not recover. We would like Vitrash to show it, that the root cause is no longer there, but that's the root cause. And we, we, are, we have an alarm aggregation, um, for example, in the Vitrash UI, we would like to show only the root cause, and then you can click and drill down to the um, related uh, alarms. Uh, we need to improve uh, the UI, the, the usability of Vitrage. The entity graph is a wonderful feature which shows you a lot of information, uh, but we need to add some filtering on top of it. Um, and in, on Pike version, we started um, writing a machine learning algorithm. We have a very first version of it. Uh, we want to automate the process of understanding the root cause of, um, of alarms. Currently, um, we have a <coughs> a human editable te templates that define the root cause and uh, uh, deducing of new alarms in the system. We want the process to automatically understand this. And uh, this is a, a, new, a new thing that we started, very promising and very interesting and with a lot of future. And actually, just after this session, we have a forum session uh, on room 102, and we are going to discuss in detail some of these um, uh, future projects. And the major, um, major goal is, of course, to extend the Vitrage community. We already have a community, but we want more companies to be involved and more uh, contributors uh, to join us. And this is just the beginning of the journey. We hope to, um, to have on the next uh, summit some, to tell you some more about the rest of the, uh, the journey. And now, like, I just gathered a few tips from our experience of the things that we did right and what you can do if you want your project to enter the big tent. <clears throat> so uh, you should start with the research. I mean, you should uh, define your goal, your use cases, what you are trying to solve, and, and verify that it is really needed. You need to check other projects in OpenStack and see that there is no one else that is currently doing the same thing because you can, you can have another project doing the same thing, but it will be harder to be accepted uh, into OpenStack and you might just as well join the existing project. Um, you, you want to, as a, if you think that you passed this stage, you, you should go and talk to key people in OpenStack. You should identify the people that are doing relevant things talk to them, get their feedbacks, maybe get some good advice, and let, let the community know that you are going to, to do something um, and, uh, and start building your, uh, your relationship, your community. And the guidelines. When we started, before we even had one line of code, we checked the guidelines, because when you start working correctly, everything will work smoothly, but if you start working, different than the guidelines of OpenStack, it will be harder later to change the way you work, and <coughs> sorry, it will, it will make your process of, opening, of entering the big tent uh, harder. And when you submit a request to enter the big tent, uh, they, they will check your history, and you need to show that for a few months you have a history of weekly IRC meetings, and you have an history of, uh, of email ex exchange, and you, you need to prove that you involve the community and not just sit in your own office and write, write your own code, because if you do this, you can have proprietary code. You don't need to be part of the community. And then after you have all this in place, 
Sorry? Then you can start coding, which I guess is what you wanted to do in the first place. Um, you can start writing your project, which I, I guess by now you know what you want to do. And unfortunately, coding is not enough. You need, there is some overhead. You need to write blueprints, which are the design documents. It's not just a matter of design. When all these blueprints appear in an official site of OpenStack, so when people go and want to understand what you did, they will go and look for the blueprints. It's very important to have a nice documentation. Uh, the developer guide, I mean, there are different kind of documentation in OpenStack. The developer guide is one of them. There is user guide and installation guide, but a developer guide is meant for people trying to use, developers trying to use your project. If you don't have good documentation, they will have a hard time using your project, and it's your interest um, to help other people get involved as easy as possible. And writing documentation is not fun, but it's extremely important. And tests are similar. It's not fun writing tests, but uh, you need unit tests and integration tests. It's very important that if you, especially when the community grows and people that you don't know so well start contributing code, you need to have a, a, a good test at the gate that you can uh, be assured that if the test is not broken, then the code is probably okay. And communication. Communication, we, I already talked about it. Um, you need to have the weekly IRC meeting and to community, communicate using the OpenStack mailing list. And it feels like you are talking to yourself. Okay, talk to yourself. We realized after a very long time that people were listening to what we were saying. And if and if uh, everything is recorded, if you send an email, there is a chance that one day someone will Google and find it, and someone may go to the uh, history of your IRC meetings and see what you, did, what you were talking about, and it gives people a chance to get involved in your project. Um, you, you want your people to know your project, and one way of achieving it is by collaborating with other projects. So you need to find similar projects or projects that the integration with your project can make both sides benefit and have better functionality. Uh, of course, the first place to look for is other OpenStack projects, but there could also be other open source, not OpenStack projects. We found similarities with OPNFV um, uh, community, but there are other open source communities, and the more collaborations you have, uh, the more people know your project, and it, it becomes something that uh, makes um, more added value to more people. You want... Um, more code contributors to join your project. Um, you, you do it by, by everything that I already mentioned. I mean, you, you send emails, you collaborate, you make it easy for them to join. So documentation is important. Also, in OpenStack, there is the concept of tagging bugs as low-hanging fruit. Um, you can find very easy bugs and put a tag on them, low-hanging fruit, and there is an option in OpenStack to search for such bugs. And we, we had developers that actually found low-hanging fruit bugs and started going and fixing them. So it gives people, new people, um, a, an easy opportunity to, to get to know your project and, and do the easy fix. And then they might uh, decide to, to stay and, and fix more complex bug, bugs. Um, doing PR, uh, presenting your project is, of course, important. Whenever there is an OpenStack summit or other relevant summit, not only OpenStack, you try to submit a proposal to present your project. Um, use every, every option to, to present and publish your project. And then there is the matter of finding the right time to, to submit the request to get into the big tent. And it's not, I mean, there are different aspects. There is no exact right date to do it, of course. Um, but before you submit your request, um, you need to check the guidelines again and make sure you didn't miss anything. If you miss something, it's not that bad. In, you, you submit a, a request in GERIT. They may give you a comment that you need to fix something, and then you can fix it. And if it's something uh, procedural, you can fix it, and um, the request will be re-evaluated. 
But if it's something, uh, a big problem, like you didn't do any public emails or any IRC meetings, then you might have to wait a few months. Um, so, so we better check before submitting. You need to have some working code. It doesn't have to be perfect. There could be bugs. Some functionalities can be missing. It's okay. What's important is to show that you are actively working on this project, and this project is interesting, and, um, and you are contributing, and you have a, a roadmap. Um, so the actual state of the project regarding how stable it is, it, this is less important. Um, and you need to show the history of IRC meetings and history of emails. And very important, you need to show that someone except you is interested in this project. Because if you want to get into the community, you, you need to show that the community is interested in what you are doing. And <clears throat> good luck if you are going to do this. Um, we are um, go presenting Vitrage uh, today uh, in the in Nokia booth. And we will be ha very happy to hear from you, uh, either on IRC or on the emails or whatever uh, way you want. We have a wiki page with a lot of information and demos and documentation. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay, thank you.